Coming up on Cronkite News, a new bill to create a lieutenant governor position in Arizona. We talk with state lawmakers to hear about the proposal. Plus, we take you to one local bakery that was chosen to supply the 2023 Super Bowl with its treats. And later, the city of Phoenix is planting trees as part of its cool corridor program. We tell you what the city hopes to accomplish. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Crockett News on Arizona PBS. I'm Stona Meadows. And I'm Colt Almodova. Thank you for joining us. A bill working its way through the state legislature could create a new executive office in the state of Arizona. Cronkite News reporter Mitchell Zimmerman explains how this bill could change Arizona's constitution. According to the Arizona State Constitution, the Arizona Secretary of State takes over when the governor leaves office early. Unlike most states that have a lieutenant governor office, but voters may have a chance to change that. Think about a governor and lieutenant governor like the president and vice president. They're a team from one party, and when you vote for one, you're voting for the potential for the other to take over. This would present to the voters the opportunity to create this uh, first in line to be governor office. Uh, so that we can have continuity, consistency, predictability. SCR 1024 would establish the office of Lieutenant Governor of Arizona. Mesnard believes the Lieutenant Governor would be more suited to take over rather than the Secretary of State. And as important as that office is, it's an office that focuses on elections, it focuses on record keeping. In the last 50 years, Arizona's governors have left office early a total of five times. Most recently in 2009, Jan Brewer, a Republican, became governor after Governor Janet Napolitano, a Democrat, was appointed as director of Homeland Security. We do have a high propensity to have the governor vacate the office. James Strickland with Arizona State University says having the governor and lieutenant governor run together can help solve the issue of party switches if a governor left office early. They run together as running mates. And so in that case, you very often see this wingman analogy. And Senator Mesnard says he doesn't just want this position to be a figurehead. The potential lieutenant governor could run the Department of Administration. Which is an agency that's plugged into every area of the government, which is sort of good training ground for them if they then ascend to the governorship. SCR 1024 already passed the Senate on a 21 to 6 vote. If it also passes the House and is signed by the governor, the voters would approve or reject the, this proposal in November. Similar efforts have been tried in the past but rejected by voters twice. In the newsroom, Mitchell Zimmerman, Cronkite News. While there won't be any lieutenant governors on this year's ballot, the deadline passed for Arizona governor candidates to file their fundraising totals for the first quarter of the year, and the candidates announced some big totals. Democratic candidate Katie Hobbs announced her campaign raised $750,000, and Republican candidate Carrie Lake reported almost $1 million raised. But leading the way in fundraising is Republican candidate Karen Taylor Robson, who raised $755,000 and also personally contributed $2 million to her own campaign. For comparison, Governor Doug Ducey only raised $550,000 in the first quarter of 2018. The next financial reporting period deadline is July 15th. A federal judge struck down the federal travel mask mandate for airplanes and other public transportation. The Florida judge ruled the Biden administration mandate was unlawful because it exceeded the statutory authority of the CDC and the implementation violated administrative law. A Biden administration official says the masking order is not in effect at this time while the ruling is reviewed. The emergency declaration for Medicaid during the COVID-19 pandemic was extended for Arizonans. The declaration was set to expire April 9th, but was extended another 90 days by Health and Human Services Secretary. Now 500,000 Arizonans won't lose their Medicaid coverage. As long as the COVID-19 public health emergency is in place, states cannot remove people from Medicaid rolls. Governor Ducey signed a new law into effect that attempts to protect residents who choose to speak out about their homeowners associations. The law is designed to allow residents to participate in HOA elections by posting election yard signs or holding community events. Supporters of the legislation say that oppressive homeowner associations have gotten out of control with their attempts to silence critics. Super Bowl 57 in Arizona is just around the corner. The event is expected to bring thousands to our state, and for many businesses, it is a great opportunity to get their name out to a huge audience. 
The Arizona Super Bowl host committee has a program dedicated to supporting diverse business vendors at the Super Bowl. Cronkite News reporter Faith Abercrombie met with a local bakery owner who is making her game plan to provide sweets for thousands of football fans. It was one email that opened up a door for business owner Stephanie Brimley's Infinity Sweets Bakery. It's so many times where you think like, oh, I'm gonna have to close the doors, and then something miraculously happened. After Brimley's sister submitted an application, Infinity Sweets was selected to be a vendor at Super Bowl 57. Panic attack, that's what came to mind. Like, I'm happy and like, I'm overwhelmed, and I'm like, did a happy dance outside of Michael's, and I was like, Okay, now that that wore off, that's going to be a lot of work. The Business Connect program is a partnership between the NFL and the Arizona Super Bowl host committee. The goal is to promote diversity and inclusivity in businesses related to NFL events. In order to apply, the business must be 51% owned by a minority, woman, LGBTQ+, or veteran. To give local businesses a chance, that's like on the brink of, hey, not surviving or surviving. Brimley mixes, frosts, and slices completely by herself. She is the only baker in the building. It's literally a one-man show. And while she's confident in her creations... I just have a love for just, like, baking and thinking outside the box and just decorating and let my creative side take over. She's excited about workshops and networking that come with the Business Connect program because she's ready to bring her baking skills to the big time. In Phoenix, Faith Abercrombie, Cronkite News. Stephanie Brimley will attend her first meeting with the Arizona Super Bowl host committee on Wednesday. With the current housing demand increase, bird rescue groups are feeling the impact. Coming up next, we take a look at the efforts to rescue and relocate burrowing owls as housing development takes over their land. And we take you to the newest cool corridor in Phoenix where over 200 trees were planted.